Hey there, fellas. You okay coming at you with another experiment? Like I promised. Some iodine. A radiator. We also soaked some coins and other items to see what happens. And here's what we have in mind for today. We've got a few leftover canisters of iodine monochloride. And the idea is to drain the fluids, prep the car, at which point we're gonna start the engine, and while it's running, proceed to pour in the iodine. And look on to see what happens. This should be pretty spectacular. Let's do this. So if you haven't been in our merch shop for a while, we have added a bunch of cool new stuff. Such as these handmade wallets and holders made out of genuine leather. It's a must-have for any dude who needs a reliable and convenient place to keep his documents. We also have an assortment of t-shirts, caps and key fobs with a fresh design. There is a lot to cover, so better you head on over to our shop and check out what we got. For anybody who places an order right now, I'll slip in a card with my picture and my personal autograph. Make sure to use PayPal to pay for your order, so that it goes through with no issues. Add something new to your collection of Garage 54 merch, and receive a card with my autograph. So head on over to our online shop, and the link of course is gonna be in the description. We fill a running engine with iodine monochloride. What will happen? Originally uploaded in 2019, translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. We are ready, everything is looking good, and we're about to start the engine. We are starting it, right? It is running, that is good. I've got me this thing, which is even a great fit. Here goes nothing. Not that easy to open. There we are. Wow, that smell. It is just... Give it some gas. Canister one, nothing happening so far. Pouring in number two. Something seems to be reacting. 100%. Oh my. It has definitely begun. Very nice. We need to cover the airbox to keep it out of the carburetor. To keep the gunk out of there. It's red, look at that. There we go. Oh wow, far out. The block is definitely aluminum. Close it, dude. And to think I was worried there wouldn't be red smoke. There it is right there. It is very much accounted for. Holy cow. That is one geyser. Stay out of there, Ivan. We should tie a rope to apply throttle. Or do that. Well, it works. It is definitely working. And so is the motor. Very nice. Yeah. There is a lot of aluminum in there somewhere. Holy cow. Now it's emitting something black, which tells us... that you shouldn't come too close. Poor calves in that video, man. I feel bad for them. Right. This has become really thick. Look at it go. Very nice.
Okay, the reaction is complete. We've drained the liquid, and it's time for round two. Something's bound to happen, right? Look at how clean the filler neck is. It is so clean. There it goes. You can close it now. And I guess we can start it. And we have a hole in the radiator. Ivan, run. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Here is where we're at with this. We've splattered the entire engine bay, the reaction yielded a ton of smoke and so on, everything was bubbling and fizzing, but aluminum, yeah, it behaves. Interestingly, when touching this stuff, and for some reason, you see the radiator on this car used to be good, and I'm not quite sure what happened to it. Perhaps it was already thinning out in a few spots. The leakage was so nasty that, well, I mean, you can plainly see the results. The liquid was being sprayed out under pressure, which was pretty epic to look at. And now we are assuming that the block might have been flushed out from the inside. Now you're gonna need a bunch of this liquid to eat away such a thick layer of aluminum. As well as plenty of time, of course. Because if you were, for example, to take an aluminum soda can, how thick would one of those be? Has anybody measured one? Anyway, it takes about seven minutes for the liquid to make a hole. As for an engine block, I don't know, maybe after seven years? In any case, we are still curious as to what condition it's in currently, so let's bring the car back to base, take the engine apart and have a look. Perhaps the liquid has even done a good job at cleaning it out, who knows. Alright, let's head back, tear everything apart and show you guys what's up. Okay, guys, while we were preparing to remove the cylinder head from the engine that we literally just flushed out with some iodine monochloride, what a pleasant surprise. Nastia is in the house. And she was like, let me give you guys a hand. She actually has a YouTube channel herself. It's called Nastia Tuman, check it out. She has got some interesting stuff on there, right, Nastia? Of course you do. Look at her helping us out. So yeah, make sure to check out her channel. And we're about to find out whether this engine is clean or not. Holy cow, when did the gearbox? We bent it? Oh, finally! Careful now! Yeah, the studs appear to have seen better days. Was there water blowing by in this area? One of the studs is rusty. That must have been the issue. Look at the corrosion. Okay, let's have a look. The block is clean! Almost. It is dirty over here, though. But here it's clean? The sleeves... Well, obviously they're gonna be rusty. Okay, what are we looking at? Let's have a careful look. Will I be able to pick that up? Yes, I will. So at the end of the day, the iodine monochloride, well, from the looks of it, it has flushed something out. But the reaction between the aluminum and the liquid, you know, when it's supposed to turn into dark grey gunk with a dash of brown, 
which looked pretty disgusting. Yeah, that was some nasty-ass liquid. Well, in this case, it has taken on a lighter color for whatever reason. I'm also seeing some kind of weird soot that you can remove. No, it's not necessarily easy to scrape off. Now, in theory, antifreeze does leave a sort of... a kind of residue. But I think it's supposed to be a different color. As for the sleeves, well, they're clean. You'd recall that when we put the rusty bolts into that liquid, they were very nice and clean after. And now these iron sleeves are clean. I mean, there is a tiny bit of rust, but I think that's because we flushed the engine with water, after which it sat for a couple of days, and apparently that's when the rust spots appeared on the iron. Okay, you saw it all for yourselves. This experiment was a tremendous success. And to catch our future content, make sure to subscribe. Send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. Alright, catch you later.